Did you know that the way you load your backpack matters a lot? Well, it does, and I'm gonna show you the best way to pack your pack so that you can have more fun on the trail. We're gonna to get to that right now. Well, I have my gear all spread out here for my next backpacking trip, which is going to be a through hike of the Tahoe Rim Trail. It's 174 miles and it will only take me about two weeks, but there is one little hiccup in my packing and that is that bear canister right there. I have a system down and I use it pretty much every time I pack for a backpacking trip, but that little guy is gonna change it up a bit. And I thought this would be the perfect time to talk with you about the best way to load your backpack for a backpacking trip, whether you're carrying a bear canister or not. If you're wondering why it makes a difference how you pack your pack, there are a few considerations that you want to keep in mind. First and foremost is that you want to load your pack so the weight is very well balanced. It's important that you have the most dense and heaviest part of the pack right up here against your core, around your midsection. That will help you to stay more balanced and it also helps you carry the load more efficiently so that as you're hiking, it almost feels lighter than it would if your bag was not packed properly. So that's one consideration. Then you also want to think about ease of access. So as you're hiking, you may stop during the day and there might be things that you wanna pull out of your pack and use when you're on a lunch break or just a break, you're sitting by a lake and enjoying the views, whatever it might be. There are some things that you want quick access to. We'll talk about the optimal placement for those kinds of items. Uh, to make them easier for you to reach and um, quick on the draw. So along the lines of easy access is also order of access. They're similar, but not quite the same. When you get to camp, the first thing you're probably gonna wanna get is your tent and get that set up so that you can get all your gear into your shelter. Uh, you can't do that if your tent is buried way down in the bottom of your pack. So we're gonna talk about where that should be placed to make it a little bit easier for you to get to. And then the final of those four considerations is moisture management and soil management. I kind of lump those two together because there will be times when you wake up in the morning and your tent is wet from condensation or your shoes are dirty and muddy or your rain jacket is not quite dry. So you want to think about how those go into your pack so that you don't end up spreading dirt everywhere. Uh, water has a miraculous way of kind of multiplying and spreading. So you've got one wet thing and all of a sudden everything in your pack is wet, even if you've got a pack liner. So managing the moisture as well is important. And as we go through this process, I'm going to show you what you can do to protect yourself against those kind of problems and make sure that your pack is packed in such a way that you feel comfortable, that it feels a little bit lighter, even though I know in terms of physics, it's not, but you, it can feel that way. And uh, that will contribute to you having more fun on the trail and also more time on the trail because if you know where everything is if you have a good system for packing you're not spending a lot of time looking for things you know exactly where they are and then when you're getting ready to pack up and leave again in the morning it's not taking you half an hour to pack up your bag you can do it in five minutes if you know where everything goes and how it gets packed before I get into all the details of how I pack my pack, I want to point out that the fundamentals are the same. Whether you have an Osprey pack that's got all kinds of pockets and extra storage spots and maybe a zipper that opens it up like a suitcase, or if you've got a really simple pack like mine that's just basically a tube with some pockets on the outside, the basics of how you want to pack are pretty much the same. So don't worry if you don't have a pack like mine, whatever pack you have, you can apply some of these principles to make it easier to pack your backpack. Now, let me show you what I've got. <laughs> my pack, this is a pack from Superior Wilderness Designs and you might've noticed that I just unfolded it. It is a frameless pack. So there is nothing inside this big old bag. It is a big empty tube and that works great for me. Some people like the support of different types of suspension systems. And I can tell you from working at the Outfitter, there are all different kinds out there on the market. But for me with a relatively lightweight kit, this is perfect and I love the fact that I can fold it up at night when I empty it out in my tent. I put it under my sleeping pad to keep my feet up. You will see that a lot of the quote frameless packs also have some kind of a pad or a soft frame inside them. I don't use that. I use the way that I pack my pack to provide the support that I need. And as I mentioned at the beginning, having the weight right around your core really makes a big difference in terms of how your pack carries. For me, I'm able to adjust that just to fit my torso size, to fit the curve of my back. And I feel like my backpack molds to my body. And sometimes, honestly, I almost kind of forget that I'm wearing it when I'm hiking. That's one of the benefits of having your pack packed properly. So if I'm starting with this big old pack, what's the first thing I'm gonna throw in here? It is an X-Pack fabric, which is water resistant. I have seam sealed it. So you might say, well, that pack is waterproof, but no pack is ever 100% waterproof. So I start by putting in a pack liner. This pack liner is a trash compactor bag that's different than a contractor bag. You've seen the big giant black contractor 
compact your bags. This one is more the size of a tall kitchen garbage bag. It's a heavier mill and you can get these in a 10 pack at Ace Hardware for, I don't know, 10 or $12 probably for the whole box. These are extremely durable. They don't tear very easily. I love that it's white because it helps me to see what's in my pack versus having a big black hole. And I've actually just taken a little bit of tape and kind of taped up the corners a little bit to make it more square and more flat on the bottom so it fits in my pack pretty well. Now I'm going to stop there for one second because I just put that pack liner in and I realized I've got one other item which is not a normal piece of backpacking gear but on this trip since I'm flying into Reno I'm checking my backpack in this little Ikea duffel. It only weighs about six ounces and I'm actually gonna put it down in the very bottom of my pack before the pack liner for this trip. The shape of it provides a good structure on the bottom of my pack and I probably will not even notice it once I start hiking. Now that I'm all ready to load my pack, I'm gonna start with some soft and light items because that's the best thing to have on the very bottom of your pack. It helps provide some cushioning and then it lifts up that more dense gear that's going to go in the middle. I have a silk liner and a pillow and then also a Dyneema dry bag that I use to put my quilt in on wet days. Now a lot of people would keep their quilt or their sleeping bag in a dry bag all of the time but I find that that creates a big solid bundle that's not as soft or flexible and so I prefer to actually put my quilt down inside the bag on top of these items and then that quilt kind of smushes to accommodate the different shapes and sizes of the things that I'm going to be putting on top of it. So it makes my pack overall a much more comfortable load than if I had several different blocks and a bunch of dead space in between them. So these are going to go in very first and then my trusty quilt is going to go on top and I'm just going to smush it in there. And it's super fluffy right now because I've had it hanging up in the basement for storage instead of having it packed up and compressed. It's better for the quilt to do that. But as I pack, it's going to compress down. Believe me, you're going to see all this gear in this pack in just a minute. One of the things that makes me crazy when I'm packing my pack is if for some reason I have a lot of dead space down here. So as I'm putting my quilt in and those other items, I am going to push down really hard and make sure that I fill out the corners. That's definitely not something I could do if my quilt was in the dry bag. So that's part of the reason this is a preferred method for me. The next thing I put into my pack is my clothing. And I carry my clothes in the Cita Summit day pack. It keeps them dry and it also serves as a great little day pack <laughs> when I get into town and I need to go uh, to, to resupply or just to go sightseeing or even traveling. So this will be my carry on for the plane, for example. All of the clothes that I'm not wearing are going to go into this. I do have a puffy jacket and I know I can compress it down to about this big and the spirit of not having big chunky blocks of things in my pack. I'm gonna put this in the bag the way that it is. I can just squish the air out and I've got a nice kind of horizontal little uh, bundle that I can put in on top of my quilt and this is good because it is ideal to pack things kind of in layers horizontally or crosswise in your pack. Uh, it's just a better use of the space and if you know where things are and then they're in the order that you need access then that works out great. Obviously my quilt is probably one of the last things I'm going to pull out of my pack because I'm going to get my tent all set up, my sleeping pad, I might want to change my clothes, all of those things before I'm ready to actually tuck myself into bed for the night. So it's perfect that the quilt is right there on the bottom. And I am compressing as I go since that quilt is so fluffy and that's how I make sure I have room for everything else. Now I am getting to that mid layer where I want to have the densest objects in my pack and also they tend to be some of the kind of smallest, lumpiest. So I'm going to do this in a way that keeps those things from hurting me in the back. The first thing I'm going to put in this section is what I call my tent bag. It's this little Eagle Creek bag that I keep things like my journal, my emergency supplies, my headlamp, unless I think I might need it after dark. This little pack is going to go in horizontally and I push it down next to my clothing bag and with the journal here that again gives a little structure to my pack and it's something that feels comfortable on my back versus having it turned around the other way where I've got lumpy things that could be poking into me. And that is going right here in this part of the pack. 
Some other small items that are going to go in at this point are my electronics. I don't typically need these items during the day, so I put them down in the middle of my pack where they're safe, dry, and protected. And my toilet paper. <laughs> this is a large thing of toilet paper. Lesson learned from past experiences. I only like wrap up enough toilet paper for, you know, two or three potty breaks. This roll is my roll that's going to last me the majority of the hike. I want it to keep dry because the other toilet paper that goes with my uh, with my towel is going to be on the outside of my pack. So this gets buried down inside, as does this. For this trip, I'm using a really small and lightweight uh, sleeping pad. This is the Uber Light from Thermarest. I do have bigger sleeping pads, but because it's summer and the temps right now at night are in the 60s, this is all I need. It's uh, eight ounces and <laughs> really light, really compact. So that can just sit there on top. I've got my tent bag, my toilet paper, my electronics, and I've got plenty of room for the next thing that I'm gonna put in here. Assuming it is dry and not soaked with condensation or rain is my tent. And I also carry a footprint and my tent stakes. I put them in the same bag with my tent because there is room, but I do make sure that my tent stakes are not sticking out in a way that could potentially puncture the tent because that would not be fun. And this whole thing, again, will fit horizontally in my pack. And that is pretty much all the stuff other than a food bag that goes into my pack. When I am putting my food bag in, I put it in on top of the pack line. Number one, so it's easy access, but number two, I wanna keep that pack liner closed up as much as possible in case it is raining and I don't want moisture or extra dirt to get inside the core of my pack. So when I'm ready to close up the pack liner, I fold it over like this and I roll it down. And then I just kind of fold the ends over that way and sort of tuck them in to keep everything protected, even if I should get some rain in my pack. Now, normally my food bag would go on top of this and then I would close up my pack, but I have that bear canister that needs to fit in here. So we're gonna work on that next. And if you're wondering about all this other gear that still has not gotten into my pack, I'm gonna explain where that goes in just a minute. If you're new to this channel or you've been watching for a while and haven't yet subscribed, I really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's a great way to let YouTube know that you're enjoying my videos and help them get in front of other people who would like them. A lot of people take their bear canister and strap it on top of their pack, but I would prefer to have this heavy weight a little bit lower in my pack. So what's actually gonna happen is I'm gonna do some repacking to accommodate this. I'm gonna bury this one <laughs> just to make it easier to carry, but I've also taken out a package of snacks for the day. So my food for the day is going to be in this right on top of my pack. So it's got that easy access when I take a break, when I stop for lunch. And then when I get into camp, I can take this out and put in anything else like lip balm that's gonna be in my fanny pack and make sure that anything that is smellable is in this before I stow it away for the night. Okay, I'm gonna take out my tent. I'm gonna take out these items. And I'm gonna take out my little tent bag. The Bear Vault folks have a neat little diagram, the best way to actually put the bear canister in the pack. I'm gonna pack it this way. And I'm gonna make sure that I have just enough room at the back of the bear canister to put something that will pad it so the can itself is not pressing against my back. That is gonna be this little tent bag with the flat journal right there. Then I'm gonna put my toilet paper on one side and my electronics on the other. And I have room to roll down the top of this bag. First, I'm gonna put my tent in. And this is my stove. This normally would be in the bear can, but right now it's absolutely full of all the food that I'm gonna take. By the end of the first day when I get into camp, I'll be able to pop this in there. It's gonna just go at the end of my tent because there's room. See, I'm compressing as I go because it's really hard to compress everything once you're done. Have to do it along the way. That, and then I can snap my pack and roll down the top and there we go one pack that is almost packed so now we get down to all the little bits and bobs and you might wonder where they're all going to go but they all do have a perfect place well i don't have any pockets on my backpack some backpacks especially lightweight ones don't have that so i use a fanny pack and this is going to contain the things that i use during the day i will put my wallet in here my sunscreen this is lip balm carry a little pack of sunscreen too I've got some anti-chafe, little itch relief, you know, just little things that you wanna have. All that fits right into my fanny pack. This is also really practical, I think, because when I take my pack off, I still have this with me and it makes it a lot easier if I'm just taking a break and wanna drop the pack for a bit, I still have access to those little things that I want right away. 
So we've talked about the order of packing your pack, putting something light at the bottom, putting the denser stuff around your core in the middle, putting things that you need easy access to on the top. And now what about the outside? You might be one of those people, or you probably have seen people who have all kinds of things hanging off their pack. They walk down the trail jingling and jangling. Maybe they just either don't have enough room in their pack or their gear's too big, whatever the reason. It's something that I would advise trying to minimize because the more things you have hanging on your pack, the more things that could get damaged by brushing up against, say, a bush that's got thorns on it or a branch or something like that. Things can fall off and get lost and all of a sudden you get to camp and don't have any camp shoes. Uh, or it can even throw you off balance and cause injury if something on your pack gets caught. If you could easily fall and get hurt, you don't want that to happen. Try to get as many things you can into the pockets or somehow very secured in your pack. And I'm going to show you on my pack. I have a cord system with little toggle cords on the back of my pack that kind of clip together and can kind of help hold things in. I've also got some lashing straps on the side that can hold things like if I put my trekking poles down there instead of across the back of the pack. And I've got a couple pockets that have stretch cords so that I can put things in here. I usually have a water bottle, a one liter water bottle on each side, and I can use the strap to keep it from coming out. And then I have a couple of items like my camp shoes that are going to go back here where it's stretchy and my rain jacket because this is a great place to put a rain jacket. So rather than putting this in my pack where I have to stop, take off my pack, open up my bag, possibly get things wet, I just roll it up and put it out here in the back pocket. I push it way down to the bottom unless it's a rainy day. And that leaves room for this, which is a little Tyvek sheet that I set, sit on for breaks. I put it outside my tent as kind of, I call it a doormat because I can spread out my gear on that outside of my tent. And I just put it right here where I can grab it right away when I'm gonna stop. This is my gimbal and microphone that I use for videoing. It's something I definitely would not wanna lose out of the pack because it's not cheap. And I also, because this weighs about a pound, don't want it to be here on the front because anything on the front that's heavy is gonna be pulling your pack away from your body. So if you've got things that are heavier, like water, these are empty at the moment, put them a little bit closer to your body. That way, this is the body side of the pack and that's right here. I'm using a bag that does clip so that I can wrap this around these cords. And even if it were to fall out of my pocket, I'm not gonna lose it off my pack. On the other side, I will put my water filter. This just rolls up so I can tuck it in here. This is lightweight so it can go on the front side. And I've got my little poop kit. Normally my toilet paper is just tucked in here in this bag with a trowel so that it's easy access when I stop. All right, that leaves me just a couple of things. On the front of the pack, I'm gonna attach my Garmin inReach. I'm gonna make sure that this is up high. And I've already got a carabiner with my thermometer and my emergency whistle here. Okay, now I do have this pocket and this is usually for a water bottle. So I'm gonna leave that as is. That just leaves me this little pouch. And normally this is where I keep my pee funnel because I can go to the bathroom without even having to take off my pack, which is really convenient. And if you're thinking that's a little gross, this is coated with a hydrophobic material and it's antibacterial. So you just go to the bathroom, you shake it off and it's fine to put it back in your pack. Although I do clean it when I go to town just to be safe. So, and I'm gonna pop that down in there. And I like to keep my bug spray here too. I don't use bug spray with DEET because DEET can be very corrosive to gears. So I use a natural uh, bug spray and I just keep that right up here. They are in the pocket and then I can close up the pocket. And on the very front, there's a little spread stretch pouch, which is great for my new tripod. It compresses so small and I wasn't using my larger tripod. I wasn't taking some of the kind of shots that I wanted to take when I am hiking. So now I'm gonna have it right there on my uh, shoulder strap pocket and I can pop it out whenever I wanna shoot some video. Now, what about my food? There's a couple places. Probably gonna be right out here. I could strap it on here if I wanted to, but again, I don't like loose things that might get lost. If this was my tent, I would run on one of these straps through the tent. And if it is rainy or wet, my tent is super soaked, that's what I'm gonna do is just put the tent on top, make sure it's really well secured so that it doesn't, um, doesn't fall off and get lost because I don't wanna get into camp and not have a shelter. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this little bag of snacks and food press it down a little bit and toss it in here right next to that sit pad. 
Now I like to snack on the go, so I usually do put some very small snacks in my fanny pack, but this is great for lunch or even if I wanna have dinner before I get to camp, I can put the food right here. And I'm actually gonna be switching this to an odor-proof bag just to make sure they don't have any bears following me down the trail looking for my lunch. <laughs> that is my little pack all ready to go. This is a 40 liter pack. So you might be surprised that I got all that gear in here, but if you pack it well, then you're gonna be able to fit your gear in a smaller package. You're gonna be more comfortable, you're gonna have more fun, and you're gonna waste less time while you're on the trail looking for things, which is frustration that you don't need when you're out there to have fun. So that's how I pack my pack, and I hope it will be helpful to you as you figure out the best way to pack your pack. And I will see you here again next time.